Well, hidey ho there again. This is uh, Nick, head coach of Cerulean City Sadducks, doing another commentary, not for my battle, but instead for the one between the Viridian City Volcaronas and the Cinnabar Island Cyndaquils. That's what team they are. So I've watched this match watch, but I don't remember too much from it. So here comes Dastardly, the Araquanid, a good bug water special wall. And then Strider, the Shiny Greninja, a mixed attacker. Which you can see here, instead of going with the usual special attacks that he runs, it is a physical attacking one, busting out a gunk shot, which does very <laughs> solid damage. But it does make sense. If he was expecting some type of special wall, you wouldn't want to bring out a special attacker against it. But uh, that spider web does go up, and that will slow down every Pokemon that Brendan does bring in on his side. So then we've got the... Meltilda, the Alolan Muck, this thing so far has been a monster, wearing off those stab knockoffs and having the ability to poison as well, and it has been a very threatening Pokemon so far this season. So Brennan brings in the 9-9, a solid pick to drop the attack. Unfortunately, it does give Meltilda a free, free knockoff onto whoever decides to switch in. Oh no, but he does switch out, never mind. And then Katrina comes in, the Altaria. This is his first time bringing Altaria, I believe. So, big ol' Flare Blitz comes out. Does about a third of its health, so not bad. And doesn't take too much in recoil, especially since he's got leftovers to heal the majority of that damage back off. So, 9-9 nine -nine leaves because he doesn't really want to stay in against Altaria, can't do too much. And Peeves, first time I think ever in our league, we've had a Rotom Fridge appear. And now Mega Altaria making its first appearance in the league. Big ol' fluffy cotton ball of delicious cotton candiness. Roosting, which, I mean, makes some sense. Want to get back up to full health, which I'm, I, I guess I can understand that it only has 150 HP. So that is very low HP. And HAL 9000 comes out to take this Blizzard, which he avoids, which is pretty good for him, even though he's got a great special defense. And a Defog to get rid of that sticky spider web, which is good. Doesn't slow his team down anymore. And now we've got a Hidden Power, so he was definitely expecting this face off, with I'm assuming Hidden Power fighting. So that is some solid damage, almost enough to KO. Or uh, it could be Hidden Power Fire as well. Probably Hidden Power Fire, just because that's usually what comes rocking on a Magnezone. And he does that Hidden Power once again, and it does nothing, and it's not super effective. So yes, definitely Hidden Power Fire. So yeah, Big Mama heals all of that back off because it is a stupid special wall. That Volt Switch does a tiny amount of damage, and he goes back. And Meltilda comes back, which is understandable. This thing can hit very hard. And as you can see, this Fire Blast does 22 damage. Really not much to be too concerned about. So this is a, a safe matchup for Meltilda. So uh, Brennan takes back Big Mama, understandably. Brings out 9-9 again to get that attack drop. But he will be coming into a free attack, so it's all damage that he can't do anything about. It. And it's a knockoff, so very powerful knockoffs. But at that minus one, doesn't do quite as much damage as it could, but knocks off his leftovers and gets that poison touch to trigger. So, not exactly the best switch in for 99. The attack drop was good for him because it definitely helps weaken that thing. And Katrina comes back out again and takes another Flare Blitz, which he still hit pretty hard. 49 damage out there. And he takes a little bit in return, and then that toxic damage some more. So it's not looking great for the good boy 9-9. So he switches out once again, wants to preserve that Intimidate. Brings out Peeves again because it is a big threat to Altaria, who roosts again. Very, very cautious play with his Altaria. It really looks like he wants to keep that thing as it full of health as possible. So keeping it as high of health as possible to avoid getting KO'd quickly. So switches out again because it does not want to go up against the Ice-type. And HAL 9000 comes out one more time and gets Will-O-Wisped, which that's that's what Rotoms do. They have their signature-type move, Will-O-Wisp, Defog, and Volt Switch. That is your standard set. Every once in a while you switch it up a little bit, but for the most part, 
that is pretty much all they run. And that burden damage is definitely going to help deal with a big tanky wall like Magnezone. So, understandably, he brings Big Mama back out. Good old special wall really can't... isn't going to take much of anything from a Magnezone. So Dastardly comes back out another special wall, so we have a, a face-off of special walls. Big Mama the Blissey is a better special wall in this matchup for sure. So it sets up that Stealth Rocks, understandably. He's got some bug Pokemon and just general things you want to chip out. And Sticky Web comes back up, wants to slow him down again, keep the pace on his side and control the battlefield a little bit more. So Big Mama healing off a little bit more. Dastardly still sitting there with pretty low health. And goes for a Fire Blast, which I'm guessing that's his only move, but with that bubble head or whatever it's called, not the best move. And a Liquidation comes out. Big physical attack coming out of that Araquanid to KO Big Mama. Almost a one hit. So that was a solid face-off for the Volcaronas. And now we have Strider back, which we know he's a physical attacker. His speed does drop, which is not the best for him. But he does get a pretty free hit here. Uh, but if he does go for that Gunk Shot again, it will go into an immunity, but he goes for the Ice Beam. And he picks up a Protean, which is now not ideal to be an Ice type against someone we know is packing a Hidden Power Fire. So not the most ideal matchup for Strider, so he goes to Bug-type, U-turns to get the hell out of there. Understandably, you really don't want to lose a thing like a Protean Greninja. That is a very strong Pokemon to have on your team, and gives you a whole lot of variability in usage and typing. So High Five Ghost finally makes its appearance, so seven minutes into the battle. And good ol'... Even though he's not High Five, he only has four hands. Eh, they all do have five fingers, though, so it's like High 20 or something like that. And then we have a big Z move coming out here. Uh, I don't remember what it is. Um, ah, a Gigavolt Havoc. So, this is a big ol' electric, I'm guessing a Z Volt switch. Because, I mean, the difference between that and a Z Thunderbolt's probably minimal. And that is enough to bring High Five Ghost way, 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 way down to definitely single digits health. I'm not sure what it was, but that is single digits right there. Which is not good for High Five Ghost. So he, yeah, he goes ahead and protects to try and just get a little bit more back with those leftovers. Because other than a pain split, which really isn't going to do much with Gintel 9000, he's not looking too good over there in the red. So now they're both sitting there in red, but clearly High Five Ghost is slower, so he just switches out to avoid getting KO'd right out. And then a Volt Switch goes into Peeves, so nice chunk of damage, but it's not a KO from the Cough Egregious. So now we have Hooligan showing up, the Tapu Bulu. And he's going to take that Stone's damage and set up his Grassy Surge, thanks to his ability. And then we've got Peeves recovering a little bit with his lefties, and Bulu getting some healing from the terrain. Now this is not an ideal matchup for Peeves, so he is going to switch it out. Brings in High Five Ghost again, which uh, I don't remember what Bulu goes for. He gets caught in the Sticky Web, which doesn't matter, his I think 30 base speed makes him slow. Yeah, the double switch, so he did get a bit lucky there. Meltilda, yeah that's a smart one to bring in, he definitely threatens it. Because uh, Copper Greedies really won't be able to do too much in return, it's mostly just got Ghost attacks. But that does mean he got the terrain heal and the leftovers heal, so brings him back into the yellow. And he can protect once again to get leftovers and terrain heal again, which definitely make him a lot happier sitting at a little higher health. So yeah, after the terrain and then the leftovers, he's sitting pretty nicely in the yellow with his good physical defense. Is definitely not a bad thing. Now, the Meltilda goes for a Pursuit, which is a nice pick of move, but Brendan did not go for the switch, so he does get the Mummy and did not get poisoned, so that's very good for him. And then gets the Will O Wisp off, so weakening this thing even further. Now he doesn't really need to worry about bringing 9 9 in to drop its attack because it's now halved because of the burn. And now it's also going to keep it from consistently healing because of the burn, it'll cancel out the terrain heals. So, 
definitely a very good turn for Brendan. Not switching was key to that. And now he can kind of just burn stall with these protects. And yeah, Matilda just going for its strongest physical attack it can, even though at this point with that have damage, it's really hampering it quite a bit. It's really not going to be able to do quite enough damage to take out this physical wall that is Cofagritus. So the terrain disappears, which means no healing for Meltilda and a bit less healing for Cofagritus. And the knockoff comes out and really only does half of the remaining health that High Five Ghost had. And here comes the infestation to make sure that Meltilda cannot escape from this matchup. So yeah, that damage plus the burn damage is just slowly going to tick down the clock and just uses the protect again, so really dirty move here, but it works. And it avoids the shadow sneak too, which may have been able to pick up the KO. But then there's the burn damage, there's the infestation damage, Meltilda is not looking too good right now. So high five, he does try and go for the double protect which is not going to work, and he does survive the Shadow Sneak as well, and then takes a burn, and then we'll take that Infestation, and that will be enough to very slowly but very surely take out the Meltilda, which is good because that is a humongous threat coming out from the Volcaronos. So now he brings in Billows the Landorus. This is another big threat. This thing can hit hard, hit fast, and has Intimidate to cripple any physical attackers that might come out against it. And Billows goes for the U-turn, because it's definitely faster, and it's still not enough to take out the ever-adamant High Five Ghost, who is just sticking it out, staying alive in this one. So Lando goes back, and Dastardly makes its triumphant return. Low health, but there are Stealth Rocks, so it is going to take it out, so... Probably not the most ideal move, but I guess he probably wanted to avoid losing his Landers to burn. Now Katrina comes back in, making another appearance. So far, all it has done has, all it has done so far is just roost when it's shown up. So it does go for the hyper voice, which uh, I'm not sure what Mega Altaria's ability is, but I assume it changes its attack to something like Dragon type or something to that degree, or maybe Flying type. I'm not sure. And now Peeves makes an appearance, which. Understandably, this thing is going to scare the Altaria. But it doesn't leave, and he does go for the Defog to get rid of Stealth Rocks. And, no, oh, Sticky Weapon Stealth Rocks, yeah. And a Fire Blast comes out, which, that's a nice solid KO, so... I'm not sure why he held off so much earlier. I mean, I know he wanted to keep it alive, but... I guess he just didn't know if there would be an, it would be enough damage to take out the Rotom Frost, but then you stay in against a Protean Ice Beaming Greninja. I mean, I guess he may have assumed since it was a physical attacker early in the battle, it may not have been packing anything special, but that Ice Beam is definitely enough to knock it out and show in that Life Orb damage some more. And this is another one I'm not quite sure what the intention was. You just brought out a Grass Fairy Pokemon into someone you have seen whip out a gunk shot before so this is going to be some big four times stab damage going into Tapu Bulu which is more than enough to just wipe it clean off the field so Bulu is gone but the terrain is still up so that is going to be a bit of healing for everybody out on the field so Billows comes back out but he is a flying type so he doesn't touch the ground so he's not going to get any of that and sure an intimidate is nice to stop the special or the physical attacks but as we've already seen this protean has mixed attacking this week so we've got an ice beam coming out more four times damage which is more than enough again to take out the landorus and lose a bit more health and heal a bit of that damage off so strider is looking pretty neat and clean right now and hal is very weak and with some burn damage and he's the last one left so a bit of water sure akin to keep it home. I think you could have gone with something different, but water sure akin is enough to pick up that KO. So Greninja bringing in a nice clean, sweepy cleanup at the end there, which is enough to get that victory for the Cyndaquils, which brings them up to a two and three record. And I believe that drops the Volcaronos to a one and four record. So good match. Brendan did 
a really good job conserving his team. He used that Coffer Grievous really well and got <laughs> held on so, ever so tightly. And uh, Greninja was choice with that mix attacking was very valuable. Uh, Big Mama the Bliss, he didn't get to do too much this week. Scare some things out a little bit and kind of just wall off special attackers. But uh, Rotom Fridge making an appearance. Good job. Um, from the Viral Coronas, we're not... I mean... It was, an, it was fun seeing the Altaria come out, but it didn't quite play out. I'm assuming Greg wanted, and Meltilda got crippled, and I think it was just he couldn't really gain the ground he needed to get that victory. But good battle, guys. Good job, Brendan. Next week is week six, so we will see what goes down there. I know I play Brendan, so that should be a fun match. I'm not sure who Greg plays, but good luck with that one. Hope you guys enjoy, and we will see you again next week.